Hello. This video, which is part of the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality Safety Program for Perinatal Care, demonstrates key steps for conducting in situ simulations in labor and delivery units. It is intended as a training tool for units implementing their own in situ training programs. In situ simulations are an important tool for improving patient safety and quality of care, particularly with rare or infrequent events. They give staff and providers a chance to practice critical skills in teamwork and communication. Unlike training in a specialized simulation center, in situ simulations are conducted in the existing clinical environment in order to practice and model responses to emergency situations using typically available resources and equipment. The goals for participants in this simulation will be to develop effective communication with the patient and family during a postpartum hemorrhage and engage in effective teamwork and communication with the clinical team members during a postpartum hemorrhage. In situ simulations can also be used to practice timely and accurate clinical interventions. However, in this training, the focus will be on effective communication and teamwork. In my career, I feel sometimes I've given, I don't know, hundreds or thousands of PowerPoint uh, presentations. And I think I always believed early on that if I just gave people the right didactic information, they would just do it. And I have learned now in the last 10 years that I've been involved with this in situ simulation work for patient safety, that it is truly the experiential learning that actually grabs people, that, is, that really matters. Because in situ simulation is done on the patient unit with real people doing their own jobs, their own roles, and the patient being there to be a human being for them to really care about, that creates a learning that is so powerful, particularly if they have a debriefing moment afterwards where they can actually talk about it and have their own aha moment and make sense of it. It is essential that staff have team steps training prior to doing any in situ simulations. It includes topics of teamwork and communication that they can actually use during the scenario, gives them a very common language and a communication framework during the simulation. Chief considerations in the early stages of planning often include determining the learning goals for the simulation. Are we really trying to do teamwork and communication as our goal, or is it going to be a clinical goal? Then you need to decide who you will need to participate, including the core staff from labor and delivery, and perhaps other ancillary staff from other units in the hospital, like the blood bank and the lab. Then you need to schedule simulations to maximize unit participation. You may do it during the daytime, on an off shift, even on a weekend to minimize impact on how the unit functions. Finally, it's important to identify all the pieces of equipment or the resources that you might need in order to create that psychological reality for the participants. Often, having a pre-simulation checklist might help you. First of all, identify the right space for your simulation experience. If it's a labor and delivery patient, make sure you're on the labor and delivery suite. If it's a postpartum patient, you may want to be in the mother-baby uh, suite. And get a room separate from that for the debriefing where people can sit around a table, talk with each other, and have video playback capability. Next, you have to arrange for actors if you're planning to use them. Ask them to arrive about 45 minutes ahead of time. Get the gown on the person playing the mother. Get her patient ID band on for the patient actor and give both the patient actor and the supporting actor their story so they'll be able to just respond to people when they ask them questions. Talk to them through the steps of the simulation to let them know, for instance, if, if the patient is going to bleed, when to pour the fake blood, to be able to know when to be painful and when to actually look as if they're fainting. If you'll be using cue cards to facilitate the simulation, prepare those in advance. One piece of information per cue card and only show them when they actually are doing that assessment. If you're a, a site that will be using a simulation observation assessment tool, print it in advance and decide who will be that observer during your scenario. If you'll be using a simulation mannequin, you need to make sure that you, the mannequin is in working order and that you have someone actually 
to uh, work the mannequin during this scenario and you may need some different materials or pieces of equipment uh, and set that up in advance including somebody who is the voice of the mannequin. If you're planning to record the video, set up your videographer as well as the equipment in advance. Make sure that it works and that particularly that you have good audio. Try to avoid placing it or your videographer right where it might disrupt the simulation. Explain to the participants before the simulation starts that you're basically using it solely for the debriefing. Assure them that the video will be destroyed at the end of the training or alternately ask them for permission for it to, snippets to be used as an educational tool. If the video recording might be used for educating others later, ask your legal department's guidance about the type of video release that you'll need and please get it signed prior to the start of the scenario. Ways to help in situ simulation be a positive experience and not be disruptive are one, using a room that is farther away from the centrally located patient care area, closing the door so that the noise does not disrupt any of the other patients on the unit, or in the morning letting the patients know that you will be holding practice in situ simulations around emergency care of patients so that we can better serve all of you. One other aspect is to tell any other staff or providers that may be caring for patients on the unit on that particular morning or afternoon what you are doing so that they are not surprised by extra phone calls coming into the central desk. From a safety point of view, it is imperative to assign one uh, simulation member to handle all the props, particularly any kind of medication or intravenous fluids so that they do not get into the central circulation of real patient care. Once the simulation is over, all of those props need to be put away carefully. Many of us that have worked and we've had these emergencies, you've actually gone through, a, I'm talking about a real patient experience, and I've had them where things have not gone well. And you go home at night and you just think about it and think about it, you do not sleep, you actually debrief it, but you're all alone. And very often that's where the shame and blame comes. But in this experience, even if it doesn't go well, they're in the debriefing and it's a safe environment and they haven't hurt anyone and they can take a moment to reflect. That self-reflection is so powerful and I've come to appreciate that. The briefing is really about planning. It's really to get everyone on the same page as to what we're going to be doing. Um, I like to think of a briefing as the, what are the goals and then what are our roles, uh, uh, what are our resources, and then what are the rules. And it's about uh, communication and teamwork. That's really what our goal is today is to look at what is our uh, communication and teamwork like. Make people feel comfortable because in healthcare we are judged quite often and there's been a shame and blame culture and this is not about that at all. This is about creating a team, working together as a team and then actually trying to improve as a team. How do my peers actually help me uh, learn and how do we learn together? We succeed and fail as a team uh, and so we're not going to be looking at you individually around your clinical skills we're going to be looking at how the team really does communicate. How do you call a second nurse? How do you call the doctors? Uh, that's what we want to look at. Because we're talking about uh, teamwork and communication, I want you to keep some idea of what is good teamwork and communication. So one of the first things is that you have to maintain situational awareness. And what that means is, is that you understand what's going on in the moment. You understand everything that's going on in the room. You uh, also can bring everything in your skill set and your knowledge set to the fore. Um, you have a good idea of what's going on and what you can do about it. Second thing is, are you using standardized language? Language around how you look at tracings. Uh, it's also like S-bar. Are you using an S-bar when you communicate with other people around what's going on? Uh, third is, are you closed loop communicating? So, there's an order uh, that's delegated, so somebody says something and then somebody repeats it, but then the original 
orderer or delegator of that information has to assure that that's what happened. So it would be something like, I need a Foley. I'll go get the Foley, is that right? Yes, that's right. So it's a three-step process. Lastly, do you all have a shared mental model? Shared mental model means that everyone's on the same team and you know what you're doing. The ground rules for simulation, the first is, is to do what you would normally do. Meaning, if you need to pick up a phone and call someone, pick up the phone and call someone. Don't pretend to call the phone. Uh, secondly, in terms of the clinical care, actually do the clinical care. Uh, you don't want to stick anyone, obviously, but uh, the best description for that, to me, is starting an IV. If we need to start an IV on mom, we don't stick mom with the IV. What we do, uh, I want you to actually take a tourniquet, uh, put it up, actually do your alcohol swab, uh, but you just tie the IV line down to mom. Obviously don't stick mom. Um, we don't want to draw labs off of mom. But I want you to do what you would normally do, and that means that kind of intensity it would be important to look at the simulation team for any kind of prompts. There will be cue cards uh, in terms of if you do a blood pressure, and again, you've got to put the cuff on, and uh, if you do a blood pressure, you will get a blood pressure from the simulation team. Other rules would be, uh, obviously, we don't want to uh, hurt the, pati the patient, the actress or actor in any way. Today we don't have a lot of simulated things, but mom's belly is simulated. She's not really pregnant. Um, so if you had to massage her uterus, you can see she has a little bit of a belly, uh, but don't massage too hard uh, because she's a real person. Lastly, our uh, baby is simulated. That's just a little plastic baby. Uh, so what I would like to do right now is go around the room. I'll we'll start with mom, and I want to get uh, your name and then what your role is today in the simulation, and then we'll go this way. My name is Elena Gonzalez, and I am playing the mom today. At this point, please introduce yourselves and your staff roles, and after introductions, I will ask everyone to return to their usual workstations, and at some point after you have returned, the simulation will begin. Michelle, um, your patient for this evening is Elena Gonzalez. She's a 32-year-old G4P4. Uh, she vaginally delivered a 4309 gram term male infant about 45 minutes ago. She had an uncomplicated and her O2 saturation 97% on room air. I just helped her back from the bathroom and she accidentally pulled out her IV, but she's doing well. And the baby's father is at the bedside and the um, meal tray is coming up. Okay, do you have any questions? You said her pregnancy was uncomplicated, right? Yes, everything's uncomplicated, and she's been doing fine after her delivery, so I didn't put another IV in. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right, Thank thanks. She's coming in. Okay, okay. yeah, go, go. It's, I need, um, yeah. I, she's not feeling real good. Um, I, I think the, was it cramping? Uh, yeah. Should I still be, cr I don't remember cramping like this with the other three. Um, Miss Gonzalez, my name is Michelle. I'm going to be your nurse tonight. Hey, so, um, has... What is your pain level on a scale of zero to 10? Um, I bet it about a four. Four, okay. Yeah. The more babies you have, you tend to have more cramping, but let's go ahead and let me take a look, okay? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle, right? Michelle, that's right. Okay. Mm. Okay, well, it's a pretty normal amount of bleeding. I'm just gonna rub on your belly to check the top of your uterus. I think, okay. well, I think she's gonna throw up. I think she's gonna throw oh, up. Think, okay. Oh, it's okay. You don't have to hold it in. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. okay. Would you mind? What is your name? I'm David. Could you hold? Could you mind oh, holding? Oh yeah, this sure. I'm just gonna go and grab her blood pressure. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh. Oh God. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Hey, um, can Mary Leah? I need you to come to six, please. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll be right there. Mm-hmm. Bye bye. He's fine. Hey, He's right can you um grab me a blood pressure, please? Yes. Don't I don't give me don't give me anything that's gonna hurt the baby. No, sweetie, I'm not. Oh. It's alright. It's, right. it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, Katie, okay. can I um, have Dr. White come into room six? Please? This hurts so bad. Yes, please. Thank you. 
Oh, our blood pressure is 85 over 45. Does she yeah. have an IV? Is I'm going to put an IV in right now. Okay. If you can string yeah. up that. Okay, we're asking for the, the blood pressure doctor. Our blood pressure is a little bit low. Low? What does yep. that mean? Oh, there's a tourniquet right here. Okay. Yeah. Dr. White. Dr. White, um, What's going on? she had a vaginal uh, delivery about, fine. I'd say about an hour ago, okay. she's and really she was doing fine. To me very okay. well. Honey, you okay? Can we um, get another line? Yeah. Does she have access now? She doesn't now? have it. I just started okay. an IV. We're about to hang hang a fluid bolus uh, now. Okay. That, and this that, is new. With, this bleeding is new within the last five minutes or so. Okay. So you said she delivered about an hour ago? Yeah. Okay. Is that Otherwise her right there? complicated pregnancy. Oh, jeez. Oh, okay. oh, oh. Can we uh, get a blood pressure cuff on her and get a set of eyes? That is a lot of blood, doctor. Yeah, it is, I agree. Her blood pressure is cycling now. Okay, any problems with her pregnancy? No, negative. Delivery? Huh? Huh? Are you all right? I'm going to, I think I need a doctor. Can we um, get some, um, uh, uh, some methogen in the room as well? Okay. Uh, oh. Here's your blood and some side attack. Mary Lee, I'm going to call out to get some methods. All right, Dad, do you, want to, um, do you want to have a seat? We're just going to do an exam to see if we can identify the source of the bleeding. Uh, Why don't you have a seat? Uh, Here's it's all right, honey. Glove. I'm right here. Sorry, do we have a long glove? Hey, um, could you? I'm going to need one of the nurses to bring me point to a methogen, please. To room six. Okay, thank you. Why are these people No, no, nothing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, nothing, nothing. All right. Let's get some fentanyl as well. It's okay, it's okay. Oh. So I'm going to do um, a bimanual exam. Um, I'm going to go see her, okay? I'm going to go see the baby, okay? Are you okay? Elena? Oh, just for a minute, okay? Hey, Christina. So um, you might want to We're still working on the long glove? Or? She's um, normal labor. She delivered about an hour ago. She's having a postpartum okay, hemorrhage. I'm right here, baby. All right. Okay. You want me to Thank you. We're getting a long yeah, glove. Yeah, go ahead and pull it up. Now I need yes. you to step out and get a hundred of fat now. getting a long glove. Okay. The long glove is right next to you. What's, what's going on? Okay, great. So she has her fluid running. Um, has she had um, I'm gonna put a second any, line in her. Okay, great. Can we, um, working on some fentanyl as well? Yeah, okay. Katie, if we you need could go blood? get a fentanyl and I'll get LR. Hey, so we're having a postpartum hemorrhage. Um, she, um, we're working on getting uh, another line. Um, we're giving her a bag of pit. Okay. So, um, yeah. I'm about to do a, a bimanual exam, but I just wanted them to get some fentanyl first. Okay. I'm Dr. Herrera. I'm one of the residents. I'm going to be helping out. Michelle, do we have an active type in cross? Yes, from admission. Can somebody it's tell me what all, this blood, what all this blood means? What all these it's okay, honey. It's, so, okay. it's okay. It's okay. This is this is um, something that's relatively common. It's called a postpartum hemorrhage. Sometimes happens after labor. Yeah, right now, we need bed. to kind of assess her, um, and then we'll explain more as soon as we get her stabilized. If that's okay, right. okay. okay? okay. Um, okay so I'm then, sorry. are you going to do sorry. a manual extraction? So I'm going to start with a manual exam, but okay. most likely a manual extraction. Okay. Um, what has she gotten as far as uterotonics, Michelle? All she's had was her 20 of pitocin after the birth. And now there's 20 of pit in the bag. I have 100 of fentanyl. And 100 of fentanyl right now. Okay. Yeah. She's in a lot of pain. Is there something we're going to do for the pain? Mm -hmm. She's giving her, Katie's some, giving her some pain medicine right now. Right now. Okay. 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 It's going to be okay. Sure. Large cross. Okay. okay. Um, so I'm going to be a little more aggressive here. I'm sorry. This is going to be really painful. I want you to take some deep breaths. Okay, um, I'm gonna. I'm extracting her uterus now. I'm getting all the clots and things out. Um, Sweetie, okay. take some big deep breaths. Elena, Elena, it's okay. They have to get all the clots out of your uterus. Right. Okay. Okay. And um, what's our ABL? So our estimated blood loss is probably around a liter at this point. Okay. So I'm Dr. Smith. I'm the attending on. And what are our vitals? Uh, she's a little hypertensive, 80 over 40, um, with a heart rate around 100. Okay, and we're going, I just she heard has, you. She has a type in cross. I think we can go ahead and activate the OB hemorrhage, hemorrhage protocol. protocol. Um, I've, I'm consenting okay. her for blood procedure. Okay, is, over 42. has the, um, has someone no, uh, notified the OR? Her blood pressure's yes. falling. We okay, and anesthesia knows? Yes. yes. Okay. Her blood pressure's falling. Can we okay. um, go ahead and, Mary Lee, could you call the blood bank and just let them know to, to type and cross her? 
okay. the two units, the OB yeah. hemorrhage protocol. Okay. So, Elena, we're going to do something called a dilation and curatage, okay? Um, the We just talked about what the surgery is. Can we just do another um, set of vitals? No, you Cycle them every, every five yeah. minutes. Every, can we do it every one? Um, every, every one minute. One minute? Okay. You have four babies, I know. We're going to take good mm -hmm. care of you, okay? Do we have two IVs in? Yes, we do. Yes. No, okay. I can't go with you, okay? No, no. Gonna, Sweetie, we're going to cover you up no. here. No. The baby's in the nursery. Okay, honey. sir. Um, if you want to wait right here, we're just no. going to take her back to the operating room, we'll, we'll okay? And we'll keep you updated. Um, why aren't you staying? Probably well, why don't you get it? Well, thanks for doing the simulation, you guys. Um, the debriefing is really the main part of the whole experience. And what I mean by that is it's the most important part because this is really where the learning goes on. The debriefing is really everything. Uh, all of this was planned and set up to get to that debriefing because the debriefing allows you to talk about your experience. You just had an experience. The way to learn from that experience is your collective intelligence. It's a much stronger way to learn than didactic. So to have an experience and to learn from that is very powerful. I think you saw from the simulation that we do make mistakes with communication and teamwork. Uh, the idea today is kind of come up with what those were. And uh, the other element is that you'll see that there were process issues. The idea is that this is just a, uh, a give and take. It's not meant to be pointing fingers, uh, so it should be just a real respectful, civil um, discussion. And it really shouldn't go outside of this room. It should be a safe environment, though. Uh, and how can we learn from each other? So uh, create the psychological safety. Then what I like to do is let them uh, give me a quick sound bite. What, what was just their general impression? Uh, and that really helps to get uh, conversation rolling. Also, by having every, addressing everyone, you've allowed everyone to speak. I know as, a ch as my charge nurse, if I'm calling and saying we have a hemorrhage, she's probably already calling the scrub tech to say be on deck because we're going to set up an OR kind mm -hmm. of a thing, right. depending on how bad or good things are once the docs come in. Right. So what you have to start getting at is how can that be uh, assured? How can you assure that communication happens so that there isn't a miscommunication on the phone? Because there you go, in terms of nonverbal, you get on the phone, well, there is no nonverbal communication on the phone, really. And so how do you deal with, with that? What I want to point out, Mary Lee, is so one of the things to try to do is to try to bring these concepts into a word, because uh, the words end up being powerful. And just like we use words for our anatomy, um, and just like we use words like uh, Cervidil, or uh, tocolytic or whatever it might be. We need words around communication and teamwork. So when you say, where is everybody going? Uh, you know, where are we going as a team? That's really, what is our shared mental model? So can we, I think, yeah. uh, I think it's more of the nurses in this hospital who use SBAR as a handoff tool. Like, I don't really know what that is. Right, yeah, and most, uh, most docs uh, may have heard it but don't know what it is. So I'll give it to you real quick. First of all, uh, SBAR was rolled out uh, primarily uh, for nurses, and so it's not surprising that the docs never were trained in it. Uh, the other problem with SBAR is um, that it hasn't been sustained, and it also has been used incorrectly. SBAR is a way to transmit critical, short, concise information, exactly what you want as an attending. You come into a room, and I need an S-bar. But S-bar came from the nuclear subworld, and what it is is it stands for what is the situation? Situation is we have a postpartum hemorrhage. What's the background? The background is she delivered a four kilogram baby, this was her eighth kid, whatever it might be. Uh, what's your assessment? A is assessment. My assessment is, is that we have enough bleeding that I think we need to go back to the operating room, which is also part of then uh, what's the plan or, you know, wh or excuse me, what is your recommendation? Um, when I am called to a postpartum hemorrhage, usually the nurses have kind of done a lot already. Um, usually the, the, either the family members have been kind of seated in somewhere else in the room or have left the room. Right. Um, and it's kind of up to me just to 
just kind of assess the patient and call out the things that I need for the patient. And so um, I kind of had an appreciation of, I guess, how much is usually done already once I get, once I get there, because those sort of things, you know, I, I would never have to tell the family member, please go sit down, you know, in, a, in the normal situation. Right. Um, um, I can almost guarantee that you'll have to do that sometime in your career. Absolutely, absolutely. So the other elements of starting out a debriefing uh, would be to remind people that a debriefing is really about three questions. What I want you guys to think about is what went well and why, what didn't go well and why, and what might you do different next time. And that's what you can do on any case, C-section, a shift, uh, could you debrief your shift, what went well on the shift, what didn't go well on the shift, and what would we do next time to make it better. So anything, any human endeavor can be debriefed, and it's really those three, three questions. And then what we're going to do is we're going to watch the simulation. I'm going to stop it at different points. If you guys want to stop it at some point, that's fine. It's incredibly important to see the video so that you understand how you actually perform. Uh, but also it's incredibly important for uh, that cognitive process to work. Whatever it might be that the team starts to look at together, they realize that they are a team. It's team building. It's also the idea that uh, a person can see something on the video and have experiential learning uh, from that. And then they start thinking about those three questions. What went well? What didn't go well? And what would I do different next time? I talked about those three debriefing questions. One of the things I did not throw out is it's best to start off with the what went well because you want it to be a positive experience and that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be educational, positive. So I just throw it out to the whole team here. So what went well? What went well? She called for help. Yep, exactly. She called for help. And she immediately started working on access, which I think. Work on access, right. Yep. What else? Um, I thought it was really, walking in as the last person, um, it was really calm and the decision had already been made to go to the operating room and one of, Christina was consenting the patient and Ben was telling me what was going on and then I just had to do a couple of quick checks of, okay, we have two IVs, what are her vitals, operating room's ready to go, anesthesia knows, so that was exactly, as an attending, what I want to walk into. Uh, so what didn't go so well or what could be better? Managing dad. Okay, so let's just talk about dad management. So I think one of the things is we, I think the nurses and I had the same mental model. I think we understand what was happening and, you know, I, I'm thinking through what I'm going to do next and I'm not thinking necessarily about what, what dad is asking. So I, there was a kind of a delay there where he's like asking a lot of questions and I'm just kind of um, thinking through things and not saying, not sort of managing his ex expectations or managing him right. um, in the moment. Okay, what else? Yeah, I would, I would ask how important is it to share that mental model with the patient and the, and the father who's in the room? What do you guys think? And I, I think that it's actually important for patient care because when you have a family member who is freaking out, a lot of the attention goes to them where you want to be focused on the patient and the, the situation. And I think that's the most important right. thing is that you tell them exactly what's going on is that you're, you're trying to figure things out, you're trying to assess the patient until they stabilize and then you know, we'll go through everything and explain everything but right now I have to stay focused on what I need to do next. If they start talking amongst themselves, uh, they'll realize that they can solve the problem and that's just it. We're all professionals, we know how to solve problems. The idea is that we don't appreciate how it really affects our work until we see it and so that ability for everyone to talk together and solve those problems is really rewarding to see. In the debriefing, it's important to ask team members to discuss specific ways they can apply what they learned in the simulation exercise to the care of the patient. It's helpful to generate a list of lessons learned that is what went wrong and how can it be corrected. Uh, so what, uh, what could be done better next time? What would, you do, what would you do different next time? When I was calling out, be more specific about what the situation What the situation was, okay. Yeah, that, I... And I think that's good because Marilia, as the charge nurse, could also say, okay, well, I'm gonna bring the hemorrhage kit with me, or, you know, I'm gonna, like, Marcella, I think... Was Importantly, if system issues were identified, then there also needs to be follow-through, or steps taken to make changes so that we can improve performance and safety on our unit. 
This video summarized the preparation for conducting in situ simulations and offered an example of an in situ simulation and debrief conducted with actual labor and delivery staff. As you can see, simulation is an important tool for practicing teamwork and clinical skills in a safe learning environment. Through practice and feedback, participants acquire teamwork skills needed for safe patient care. Thank you for watching.